I'm Stephen Foskett, organizer of Tech Field Day, and this is the on-premise IT roundtable for Gestalt IT. We are here in Boulder, Colorado, at the offices of NetApp Solid Fire for Storage Field Day 13. And one of the things that came up among the delegates was a discussion of scale-out storage. Now, now, this is one of the topics, uh, one of the most hot topics in storage right now. I actually tweeted this morning or yesterday or something that scaling out is literally the hardest task and the most important task in storage. And uh, Eric um, asked the, the, the key question, you know, given the fact that scale out storage is a wonderful, useful technology, why would anybody buy an array that doesn't scale out? I mean, shouldn't this be how they work? It's one of those funny questions. And, uh, you know, I feel like he's right. Um, Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, what, what led you to this idea? Well, it's a combination of our earlier tweets about scaling in general, that scaling means going up and down. You should be able to right size exactly what you need, and you should be able to put stuff in, take stuff out over time. And it brought me to the realization that it's been so many years we did virtualization, we had to sell virtualization as a solution. And today, if I need someone to put a physical server dedicated to a task, I have to sell that as a solution. And I'm thinking right now, how long is it going to take before we see scale out storage become that default mode of operations where if somebody wants to buy, God forbid, a VMAX, um, it's going to have to be a huge, huge, I say, well, look, we've got this you know, scale out storage solution right next to it that'll scale just as big and even bigger. It and just seems like a no-brainer, right? That, I mean, that's why, why I don't understand. you want your storage to be able to shrink and grow, both in terms of capacity and performance? performance. In, you know, is there a situation? I mean, can any of you think of a situation that you would not want scalable storage? No. 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 Well, no. I didn't figure you guys would because <laughs> you guys have dedicated your career to scalable storage, yeah. right? You're, uh, well, you're actually, you can include me in that, by the yeah. way. Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> you're not going to have much disagreement from this panel, apparently. But it, it's, well, I, I came to work at this place for a reason, and it's the, the whole idea that um, you need st storage, storage to scale to be able to make effective use of it, that uh, going out and buying disk trays was not actually taking advantage of, you were either underutilizing or overutilizing controllers to take advantage, to take advantage of being able to add um, just raw storage to an existing controller. And, Actually, one of the things that caught my attention to Solid Fire was your next generation storage symposium where it's like, oh, this is nice. It's as as you add more storage, the IHOPs increase as well. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. So Chris? Yeah. Oh, I was, I was going to say, so my background is not uh, actually in storage. Only the last four years has been in the storage industry. I, I was in uh, service provider operations for 15 years prior to that. And in, you know, working in the, in the hosting industry and in the service provider industry, um, specifically in the area of databases, uh, I, I used to uh, seek out dedicated silos of storage so that nothing would mess with my database. That was the use case in which I wanted dedicated storage. So nothing could okay. touch it, nothing could step on my toes, and nothing could disrupt operations. The, the key to a scalable storage array of, of any modern architecture, distributed architecture um, that goes up and down, the key is you have to have quality of service protection for the volumes on the system. Without that, yeah. you are asking for a disaster, re regardless quality, of how it scales. It's not no. just quality of service. That's one of the things that I mentioned, yeah. and, and again, Eric yeah. and I talked about this as well. Um, it's performance, and it's, it's yes. appropriate performance, right? Yeah. You know, you, I, I remember uh, there was a company that was selling a scalable storage system, mm -hmm. except they used the same controllers, and they used the same single SaaS port to daisy chain to like over 100 terabytes of yeah. storage on one SAS port, and I'm thinking, okay, yes, it scales, but no, that really, really, really doesn't scale. Yeah, there's no excuse for bad architecture, and, and when you when you put one SAS channel to 100 terabytes worth of storage, you're really stressing that SAS chain. Of course, with yeah. the big SSDs today, maybe we will have 100 terabytes on well, one SAS channel, one but that's different. That's a, yeah. that's a difference. Um, <laughs> On, but on the other hand, the question that comes down to the break point that I see for a lot of people is right now, as Steve has mentioned and we've all seen, doing scale out storage correctly mm -hmm. is a hard problem. It is. And cool. the problem with hard problems is that when you bring them to market, they're expensive. Which I think right now is the fact that the entry level point for too many of the scale out systems is just a little too high for most mid range customers, small to mid range customers. I spend more time in the small to mid range. I can t totally say, as soon as I get to mid-range large, 
it should be a no-brainer. There should be no more monolithic arrays. What, what do you consider the price point for small to mid, though? What, what do you consider that breaking price point? You may have a different perspective coming from coming Europe. Fr coming from the Europe. The market is different. Uh, and the other one, the flip side is I'm seeing a lot more. The key component I'm looking at is two things: here. scale up, coupled with dual site high availability. So site aware, scale yeah. up. That's yeah, yeah. those are the key uh, key factors that I keep uh, getting coming back to every single time that I want it to be continually a available. And I want to be able to have dual site for true split uh, stretch. Well, we were having a conversation in, in the limo on the way over here. I think it was led by Alex, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and ultimately the the conversation says, "Okay, what do you want?" The customer answers, "I want zero RPO RTO. I mm -hmm. want high IO. I want scalability. I want. I want. I want." Yep. And Alex puts together a quote for that customer, and he says, "Okay, so now let's step it back." Yeah. Quality costs. But I think we're in the industry, we're at kind of a tipping point where the leverage of commodity SSD, commodity x86, um, standardized uh, connectivity tools like SAS, like uh, NVMe. Uh, yeah. um, like Ethernet. Like Ethernet, like Ethernet, 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 Ethernet or NVMe over fabric. Hmm. Uh, these, are, these are not proprietary architectures, these are commodity architectures and to lean on that kind of technology uh, to move the ball forward and to reduce the overhead in manufacturing and ultimately cost to customers um, is happening. And I think it's happened for a lot of the manufacturers today. Uh, we're seeing uh, quality brands come out with rock solid products that can scale out at a, at a reasonable price tag. Yeah. And I think there's a, a lot of resistance to the cost of entry to an awful lot of things early on. Uh, I, I talked about kind of the, competent, the uh, contrast between RAID and virtualization, and uh, I, I ran across my T-shirt from VMworld 2005, which is virtualized now, and it was trying to convince people that there was yeah. a good reason to virtualize. <laughs> and yeah. it's, the, the scale-out argument is very much the same. It's like, okay, the, the initial buy, it, it's, if you're looking at the initial buy-in of what you need today, um, and you're not- You're, you're not counting your reduced, you're, you're, you're not you're, making your cost reduction over time. Exactly, exactly. And the idea that if you buy the storage you need today, and you're gonna retain that for forever, what you, what you fit in, let's just use the four node example of what SolidFire does today, that that's potentially going to fit in one node of the same size uh, four years down, yep. down the line. Well, and we, we also need to, need to take a look at, at what's happening with consumption models. You know, the, the, <coughs> the initial you know, massive capital outlay for CapEx expense is not necessarily the only way to consume storage now. There are, there are capacity licensing models. There are all different ways of, of making this more of an OPEX spend than a CapEx spend. Sure. Well, That's, does that I, obviate the need for a scale-out array? I mean, if you have a company well, that's willing the need. to give you the, yeah. I, I would say absolutely not. I mean, that's, that's a financial discussion versus an operational discussion. Exactly. And the operational well, and realities are still going to trump everything decision else. decision makers uh, together. Yeah, that's right. right. And, and it helps those two people work together, frankly. Sure. Uh, Keep in mind, scale out is also hopefully. scale in. That, yes. that, that it Thank works you. both directions. Yes. Um, that if you have some uh, bloatware that needs more space today that will shrink in size next week, you can potentially reduce in size and use that elsewhere. Every once in a while. <laughs> well, well, I, th that's actually a real good point, sense. Matt. You were making a little joke there. Does that happen? I, I, I see we've all said only getting larger. It's one of those storage yeah. truisms that storage only grows mm -hmm. because essentially in, a, in the history of, of our jobs as storage admins, which apparently means we're dead, mm -hmm. Andy. Thanks. Yes, we uh, are. Uh, in our history Evolve. of storage <laughs> admins, we've never We've never found this, the situation where, wow, we've got too much storage. I mean, we might say that on an application by application basis, but there's always someone there who needs willing to take it. Yeah. Well, and this is this is the, where the the expand and contract portion of it comes in handy. It's forever. Chris and I see email from various organizations saying, "Can you spare five clusters for this weekend for us to do something so we can actually do this?" Mm -hmm. and they almost always get their their five uh, nodes. I'm sorry. Can yeah. you spare five nodes for a cluster this weekend so we can do this one thing? And they almost always get the request. And 
the nodes go back to where they were originally used elsewhere. And it, it's, it's the nature of scale out storage where it's like, yeah, we, we're at a capacity in our cluster right now where yes, you can have a node for a weekend. So do you think that the reason that storage only grows is because storage only could grow? Well, of that's, course, that's, that's quite well, possibly. Yeah. It's, it's like a ratcheting thing. Yes, yes, yes it's no. like a ratchet. Yeah. So yes yeah. and no. So uh, the else. advent of larger word widths in software has made a huge difference. The, the size of software has grown incredibly, and an awful lot of that is the instruction size and the address size has grown. So I think this, uh, I would make an argument that a lot of that is uh, programming frameworks and high level <laughs> yeah. well, languages. No, I, and absolutely, I agree. And it's and I, I've had I've had this discussion about what coding actually is with various different mm. coworkers as well. And it's like, uh, you know, coding and DevOps is what was expected of a system administrator 20 years ago. You have a system administrator who is expected to be able to write rudimentary code to do their job. Mm -hmm. And, and to link together other and, people's and code. 25 I mean, years later, you have the expectation that DevOps IT administrators should be able to write rudimentary code to do their job. There's, there's nothing new under the sun. The idea of automating yourself out of a job is nothing new for those of us who, I've been there who, who, who wanted to movement. progress our careers and, 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 but, and evolve. I, I would, and I, and I would harken back and say the storage admin isn't dead. Just as the caterpillar, I mean, is the storage admin dead or is the caterpillar dead when the butterfly happens, you know, when the butterfly comes out of the, the chrysalis? The storage admin needs to evolve. That's very the, the, uh, the that rhetorical of you. But back to the topic of scale so, of but, but one more, No, one more point. The only time I ever see a company need less storage on a, on a fundamental level is when a business transaction occurs, when they sell off a fragment yes. of the mm -hmm. organization. Um, I don't see standardized data utilization and growth stopping or reversing ever. The only time I ever see it is when a when a large business fundamental yeah. transaction yeah. takes place. And I'll I'll agree on that portion of it as well. Where the more and more of things that are stored are images, video, Audio. things that data that are, streams from IoT. Yeah, all yeah, that. things that are huge that need to be. Um, you know, data streams from IoT are, are a perfect example of things that you need to store and never look at or look at way down yep. the road. And if you don't have them, you're kind of screwed without them. Yeah, I used yeah. to call that worn. Okay. Write yeah. once, read any, read never. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 We're, we're yeah. just in case. And I, I'm sorry if I interrupted. No, you. no, it's actually, it's interesting because I was just taking that thought even further down the line from the scale down side is, how long before that scale out technology, scale in, scale out technology replaces the home synology. Wouldn't it be nice for your little home NAS to just be a disk with this kind of smarts? And when you need more, we just throw another disk and the NAS just got bigger? That would be fantastic. Would that not be well, the logical end game for where we're going with these technologies? Yes. And, and that actually gets to yes. one of the reasons that scaling storage is so <laughs> difficult, is the protocols. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're basically, um, all of storage is based on these archaic protocols yeah and designed fake to disks. Scuzzy, designed you know to move I mean? SCSI commands around. Basic, well, basically designed to pretend they're a disk. I mean, or pretend they're a file server. I mean, but 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 so much of storage is still you were tied get to this me idea off, way of way off topic disks. so quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and But the problem is that it's really hard to scale those things. And it's hard to scale um, on the server side only. You know, that's the other thing, is that we have very little client participation in storage. So, um, you know, the client just expects everything, nothing to ever change. And the server is supposed to do everything and make everything still work and make it look like a disk drive from 1985. But also to never run out of space. Yeah, yeah. That disk. Magic, exactly. I want a magical, magical disk drive, drive that never runs out of space. That's, that's what the vSCSI layer in uh, VMware is for. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, that, and, and so I guess, you know, my thought is that we need to move beyond the protocols because, you know, object storage has no trouble scaling up and down, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the largest storage array in, on earth is, the, is Amazon S3, right? And why? Because it's basically a database. It's a, you know, key value database. It's key value object storage. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and if we use that as our regular really. storage system, would we have, would this not be a discussion? But yes. and and. Coming back to a storage vendor perspective on that, it's mm -hmm. while while S3 might appear to be this object store or that that's a key value data store, uh, at the end of the day, it's under the hood. It's it, a bunch of disks. It, it's going to go through SCSI protocol at some point. I guarantee it. Yes, but 
the client no longer speaks SCSI, and that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. The client, yeah. you know, if we don't have client participation, we can't create scalable storage. And if we, if we change the client, then we can scale storage easily. If we don't change the client, then we have to go through all sorts of crazy contortions. I would, well, I would qualify that easily to at least more easily. Because it's still a scale out fundamentally still a scaled system fundamentally which has got all the complexity uh, that comes with building a properly designed distributed system that doesn't fall over when you pull pieces out and also a little bit more convoluted in that the metadata structures are are segregated yes um, so from from a, a physical architecture perspective uh, although I can certainly see Stephen's point the client doesn't need to care about any of this the architecture needs to understand the differentiation between the data and the metadata. Um, and, that's, and that gets back to the original question, is why wouldn't you want a scale-out storage system? And my easy answer is because you can't use a scale-out storage system, so therefore you can't have one. You know, so maybe that's an answer to Eric's question. Well, that's for an individual application, right? I mean, if, you have a, if the application isn't participating uh, in the, in the scale-out uh, scenario, it's going to it can consume storage in a, you know, some type of archaic way that makes it looks like, look like a single disk. Yeah. Yeah. But the underlying system can be a shared system that can still st you know, scale out and, yeah. and support many thousands of those, layers. you know, abstraction layer, they can support many thousands of those types of uh, kind of legacy built applications. So that would be a regular LUN on a solid fire system, for example. Yeah, it could be a, a single volume, but. Right, it, and I mean, it, it ties into the virtualiz virtualization analogy again, where it's, uh, virtualization works in, at scale in the aggregate, and scale-out storage systems work with storage in the aggregate. If, if, you work, if you only talk about a single workload, you go back to your silo sitting in the corner. If you talk about aggregating workloads, that's where your scale-out becomes interesting and important. And I, going back to the participation question of the client, I mean, if, if you're dealing with an application that it has been uh, written into a service-oriented architecture, then you don't have to deal with disks. You can say, okay, my application is going to talk to a database, and that database happens to be uh, an object store, key value object store, um, and you know that's how it presents. So you've, you bypass the the you know instructional layer that goes through the hardware and everything. You're just making a, a service call to a database at that point. How that database is crafted and presented, that's totally abstracted away. Yeah. So you can make that out of almost anything. Yeah, um, and and then you get to cool situations like Dropbox deciding they're going to move off of S3 and no one noticing. Right. Yeah. And that yeah. is. Totally fantastic. Being able to change the physical underlayer of a running application or, and a running web scale application without anyone noticing is one of the most fantastic things about uh, abstraction layers and, and scale-out architectures that I've encountered. It's just just tickles me pink from an operational perspective. Yeah. So, so another reason that people might not want scale-out storage is uh, you know back to one of the things that Chris brought up, and that is sort of this um, this kind of jealous hoarding idea that this is my thing. I want it to be mine. And that's been an issue that I've had with DBAs in the past. So I was a storage admin. <laughs> I'll come um, to I was, it. Yeah. I was the guy who <coughs> was saying, no, 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 it's OK to use virtualized storage. It's OK no, to it's use good. hybrid storage. <laughs> it's OK to use caches. And the database administrator is saying, no, 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 it has to be configured exactly like this. Because that's how it has to be. Because the database is the beating heart of any organization, belt, suspender, and overalls. That was our credo. And, and frankly, moving away from that into a polyglot persistence model, into a cloud model, into this hybrid architecture, into the world of scale-out systems. Every database I've, server you ever built had a separate volume for log files and a separate every, volume yes, for right data. there and yes. right there we need a separate volume for log files. <laughs> so the religion of the DBA is one that I'm recovering from. So you have to forgive me. And I still have tendencies, but I, I'm an advocate for DevOps and scale out systems, et cetera, these days. And the funny part is, in 90% of the virtualization installations, those two disks went on exactly the same storage with absolutely no differentiation. But they were presented to the DBA. And at least, at least I was short stroking the log drive. With some quality <laughs> service, we have at least the ability to do that differentiation to say, yeah. yes, you have your logs you over see? there, you have there your database here. Looks now at least like we can tell SQL you have server. different behavior that you want from them. Well, and now and now I can, since I've, I can, in modern systems, you can separate performance from capacity. I can say, I, I only need 100 gig, but I want it to be blazing fast. And then over here, I don't need it to be nearly as fast, but I need, I need, I need you know, half, a t half a petabyte of it. You know? And that's true, and we could never do that before, because nope. we only right. had one thing to work with. Now well, we have many things to work with, and soon we're going to have even more mm -hmm. with persistent memory and NVMe yeah. and so on all the way down the stack. We're going to have more on the fast side, and we're also going to have bigger, slower, in, lower. In 
slower SSDs, well, because the, the SAS bus is going to be the bottleneck yes. when you throw 30, 16, 32, you know, so 120 the ratio terabyte is, SSDs that's in the same spaces. Slower, yeah. So do we have an answer? Is, do, do we, why would you ever not want a scalable storage system? So in, in today's world, the answer is no. And yesterday's world, there, there would never be a reason not to have a scale. In the next uh, yesterday's world, the answer was yes, but some but, people are but still living in yesterday's world. Well, that's exactly a very true. long tail of adoption. And, and, but in, <coughs> in yesterday's world, the reason was cost, mm. I think, more than anything else. Well, also technology. Also, just it doesn't exist. It, it, it did or exist. Or religion, or it, right, protection. Right. Yeah. yeah. Protection of performance. Yeah. It, okay, well, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thank you guys very much. Uh, this has been the IT Roundtable podcast from Gestalt IT. I appreciate you guys joining us. Um, if you enjoyed this discussion, well, I like you, but uh, you should come visit uh, at uh, gestaltit.com. You'll find more writing like this. You'll also find more podcasts like this. Uh, you can find us in iTunes, um, in Stitcher, in pretty much any podcast location. And we would love to have you subscribe. Uh, you can also subscribe to our storage new newsletter or follow us on Twitter or find us on Facebook or find us on YouTube. Um, if you'd like to reach me, I'm Stephen Foskett at S. Foskett on Twitter, and I look forward to hearing from you. See you next time.